Hi, so I'm going to go over availability sets here. So when I create a VM, I am prompted here to put it in an availability set. So when I click here, I created an availability set already. I'm going to click uh, uh, Avail Web01, which is the availability set where I'm going to group a bunch of VMs. And that's so there is no single point of failure. So after I click OK here, I want to show you the results of uh, the availability set and the other VMs that I have within that within that um, availability set. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to have it deploy the VM that I just created. So once I create the VM in the availability set, I am not able to um, put it into other availability sets. And, and I'll explain that a little bit later. So I'm going to click on all my resources here. And you'll see I have my availability set here. And you'll see within my availability set, I have four VMs. And you'll notice there's a fault domain and there's an update domain. Now the fault domain is the power plug or the switch that is shared between these numbers. So you notice if I sort here, Firestar and Silver Surfer share either a power supply or a power source and a network switch meaning that if that network switch or power supply fail these two these two VMs might likely fail however because my Firestorm and Iron Man VMs are on different fault domains they will continue running so that gives you high availability now that is what a fault domain is now the update domain is when there is maintenance on Azure they will not restart uh, certain VMs uh, in groups so you'll see for all of your instances with the same number they might be restarted in or have planned maintenance within the same group so I have two VMs here under update domain and they are one and one so those uh, there is a possibility that those will have maintenance uh, under Azure within the same group whereas 0 and 2 will not uh, so that's what your update domain is is th if there is any maintenance uh, it is done within these groups now when I assign a VM to a availability group these numbers are automatically assigned and because they're automatically assigned the VM itself is created in a different location which is why once you assign it you're not able to move it easily or you're not able to move it at all actually currently um, and if you create a VM that does not have an availability group you're not able to put it in an availability group so you have to put a VM in an availability group when you're creating it so that's really what availability groups are now after I've done an availability group I can actually put it in a load balancer so if I go back to my resources here and I scroll down I have a Microsoft load balancer that I've named LB web 01 which is my web tier and I've assigned the if, if I click on the back end pools you notice I assign one availability group to the uh, VM and uh, I mean to the load balancer and I've assigned the three VMs on the load balancer only one of which is running but uh, there are actually three VMs so so this uh, availability group allows you to assign it to a load balancer which evenly distributes uh, some of the traffic across your VMs so that is another advantage or usage of the availability groups and uh, I hope that uh, sort of clear things up a little bit and I will show I will show you a demo of uh, the load balancer with the availability groups and all the VMs within it um, in another video so uh, check out that video on my channel and thank you for watching